Greetings Trailblazers and welcome to Honkai Star Rail. Anyways. Chimorofa, you don't happen to be at Stargazer Navalia right now, are you? Yes. Mr. Yang? <sighs> Looks like there's smoke rising in the distance. Miss Shikue sent us a Psycrane. See if you can get an aerial visual. This is an emergency. We need to find where the star skiff crashed as soon as possible. Connect the Psycrane. I'm a bird. I'm a Psycrane. Don't tell anyone. We found it. Looks like the pilot isn't inside. If they escaped before it came down, they should still be nearby. Not good. Looks like the crash disturbed monsters in the area. We need to get there, fast. There. That must be who Miss Shikue asked us to save. We need to hurry. Those abominations have trapped her. Be careful. Man, how do I get down there? Ah, oh, there you go. Get back, you demons! I'm not afraid of you! Stay away! Get out of here! It's too dangerous! Go get someone from the Skyfaring Commission! Tell them Ching Ni is in trouble! Okay, see you later then. No, it's too late to call for backup. Don't worry, Miss Ching Ni. The Skyfaring Commission sent us to help. Uh huh, so. Wow! Impressive! There are too many monsters. Let's hold out for a little longer. The Cloud Knights should be here soon. Just run! These monsters can't get up here anytime soon. No can do, Miss Chingni. We're not abandoning you. Huh, okay. You two have held out long enough. Help is at hand! Cloud Knights, formation! Prepare to engage! Hold on, King Ni! We're coming to get you! I didn't know the Hellmaster of the Skyfaring Commission dealt with situations like this in person. Indeed. I should be reviewing files in the Palace of Astrum. However, Ching Ni decided to put herself in danger and trouble our esteemed guests with her safety. As her mother, I couldn't sit idly by. So that's why. Ching Ni, have you thanked your benefactors yet? Thank you, benefactors. <laughs> no need, Miss Ching Ni. It was nothing. I didn't really do anything. No need to be humble. You took great risks for the Xianzhou. I saw what you did. It was because of both of you that Ching Ni escaped unscathed. Words cannot express my gratitude. In fact, by way of thanks, I'd like to invite you to the Palace of Astrum for tea. It the feeling is mutual, Lady Yukong. We would be honored. Then, for now, I will excuse myself. Ching Ni's irresponsible actions caused much trouble for the two of you. Allow me to apologize once again on her behalf. Ugh, you always do this, Mother. Scold me before figuring out what actually happened. 
It was a dire situation. I was the only one who could- You promised me, Ching-Ni. We shall discuss this when we return. Please excuse us, benefactors. I look forward to our meeting. I didn't know Yu Kong had that side to her. You mean a scary mom side? You have a unique way of putting things. Thanks. But you're not wrong. Appearances seemingly tell us little about the lives of the Sienjo's leaders, no matter how long those lives may have been. Yu Kong's inner worries and concerns came to the surface in the presence of her daughter. Only then was it clear that she, too, is somebody's mother. I feel like you relate to this a lot, Mr. Yang. Yes. After all, I know what it's like to worry over a kid's homework and whether their lunch is healthy enough. But there's something I don't understand. Yes, Ching Ni piloted a star skiff without permission and put herself in danger, but she meant well. Nevertheless, Yu Kong's reaction suggests that there was something more. Anyway, let's head over to the Palace of Astrum. Best not to keep Yu Kong waiting. To the palace! Uh, let's avoid sudden exclamations like that once we're in the palace. Okay, fine then. Remember, this is no field trip. We're having tea with the Helm Master of the Skyfaring Commission. We'll need to act with diplomatic decorum. All right, let's head out before it gets late. Why won't you listen to me? Because it's my life! Huh. Hmm. Hmm. You know I have the talent to make it. I can become the Lafu's best pilot, just like you were. Talent? You'd be dead if it weren't for those two travelers. Do you think stealing a star skiff and taking to the skies is a show of talent? What about being trapped by abominations? Did you at any moment think about what I would feel if something happened to you? Do you know how many people dream of a relaxing desk job at the Skyfaring Commission? You promised me to work responsibly in your post. Not only have you broken the Skyfaring Commission's regulations, you've broken your promise to me. I already told you, I had no choice. I want to help you and the Skyfaring Commission, not sit at my desk dealing with never-ending papers. That job doesn't suit me. I got the highest grade in the fighter pilot test. They all said I was a genius like you, like mother, like daughter. They were all jealous of me. But no one even knew I had to take the test behind your back. You would never have allowed me to go if I told you about it. Behind my back? Do you really think you could have walked into the test and sat in the cockpit if I hadn't given my permission behind the scenes? As for genius, don't mention that word to me again. Why do you insist on becoming a pilot? I don't understand. And I don't understand why you don't understand. Why can anyone in the world become a fighter pilot except the Hellmaster's daughter? Don't you realize how ridiculous that is? You may not want to fly anymore, but don't trap me down here with you. Ching Ni, where are you going? <sighs> I'm sorry you had to witness this. Apologies, Madam Yukong. We should have given you some time. Mr. Yang, I told you it'd be early. You're right. An oversight on my part. On the contrary. I apologize for allowing my own personal matters to encroach on your time. We don't intend to pry into private business, Helmmaster Yukong. But if there's anything we can help with, please don't hesitate to ask. Family issues, I'm afraid. 
You probably heard a thing or two just now. Despite my earnest wish that she continue in her post, Ching Ni is fixated on becoming a fighter pilot. I may seem overpairing, but the situation she gets herself into sent a shiver up my tail. <sighs> it's funny, isn't it? I've seen every disaster imaginable, from the Abundance Axis to a living planet. I thought I'd forgotten what fear was, but when I fought alongside you, I realized there are still things that can terrify me. I'm sorry. Talking about such vexing matters is unbecoming in front of guests. I invited you here to gain a better understanding of the Express, not bore you with these trivialities. Oh, I prepared refreshments for you. Please, you must try this excellent whale tide spring. Please accept these gifts as thanks for saving my daughter. I'd heard that the Nameless had traversed the Starry Sea, but... I wasn't prepared for how much I could learn from you. Well, I'd heard from members of the Skyfaring Commission that you were a top-tier pilot, Madam Yukong, and an ace among the Cloud Knights. Now that I've seen you in action, I know the rumors were true. I hope to witness your flying ability for myself one day. We'll head off now. The Commission must be busy. I look forward to our next meeting, Madam Yukong. <laughs> On my flying ability, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you, Mr. Yang. The sky no longer suits me. You two, please, wait! Oh man, what is it now? <sighs> Thank you for saving me, benefactors. And I'm sorry you had to witness all that. I understand. It's the part of parent-child relationship. So you've experienced it yourself, Benefactor. That's great. I, I mean, I'm happy I finally found someone who can understand me. But I've had the hairpin ceremony. I'm an adult now. I have the right to pursue my dreams. Mom still insists on sheltering me under her wing, as if I can't even stay alive without her. <clears throat> uh, Miss Chingni, these are family matters. I'm not sure it's my place to comment. However, in my personal experience, becoming a parent often means we become obstinate. To erode a rock, one must be patient and persistent, like water. What I mean to say is, instead of trying to prove yourself suddenly, perhaps you could demonstrate your ability to look after yourself methodically over time. Don't you think, Miss Chingy? When it comes to family stuff, I leave it to Mr. Yang. You know, because why not? My mom is actually a reasonable person but she gets unreasonable as soon as I mention flying. <laughs> she hid my Starskiff toys, dragged me away from the port when I stayed behind to count ships, forced me to study for ages. <laughs> I did everything I could to work my way into the Skyfaring Commission, but she used her authority to assign me a desk job. <sighs> Every time I walk along Starwatcher Avenue and look up at those ships flying freely across the sky, I feel empty inside. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of empty inside, so how were Mom's refreshments? Good? Yes, the aroma was incredible. <sighs> I've been so angry today I forgot to eat anything. <laughs> How about this? My mom thanked you guys with refreshments, so I should do the same. Let me take you around Starskiff Haven. We can try the most authentic snack on the Lafu. <laughs> We're here! The thing about the most authentic snack on the Cienjo Lafu is... 
It's a drink, and it's inside this vending machine. Wow, the full five-star treatment. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't have the money for anything fancy. Here, mung bean soda. One can each. This thing has a bit of a unique flavor, but I love it. Let me try. Hmm, <laughs> a nostalgic experience. Uh, oh, is there a drink like this where you're from? No, no, this reminds me of when I first boarded the Express and forced myself to drink Himiko's coffee and <laughs> how my taste buds never fully recovered. So, uh, how is it? Bearable? I don't know, man. This just pick something nice here. Delicious. Simply delicious. Whoa! <laughs> I've never met a traveler who could down a mung bean soda like that. But I guess not everyone can accept what I like. Just like flying. Well, don't force yourself. Let's go somewhere else. Oh, I know a really great place in Starskiff Haven to Starskiff watch. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of mung bean soda moments in life. If you don't try, you won't know. Unique experiences are often a product of risky choices. <laughs> Tell that to my mom. Her number one life lesson is, you can't turn back once you enter the sky. Pilots are always dancing with death. I know she's right. I know being a fighter pilot is an exhausting and dangerous job, but I still want to fly among the stars, to fight for the Sienjo Alliance across the vast galaxy. Why are you so dedicated to that idea, Miss Chingney? Have you heard of the Foxy and Birth Fate tradition? Soon after a child is born, we surround them with items that represent future destinies. If the child reaches for a Jade Abacus, then they'll grow up to be a Diviner. If they reach for a sword, then they'll grow up to be a famous warrior. And if they reach for a toy star skiff... So you reach for the star skiff? No. Not me. <laughs> My genius mom did. Mom reached for the star skiff and showed a natural talent for flying. General Jing Yuan recruited her to the Cloud Knights as soon as she was old enough. <sighs> That's how she became a fighter pilot. Later, she achieved miracles. One time, she destroyed three beast ships in a hail of barissant anti-aircraft fire. Like an arrow tearing through a thunderstorm. She also holds the Skyfaring Commission records for speed and enemy vessels destroyed. I'm proud to be Madame Yukong's daughter. I have wanted to become a legend like her for as long as I can remember. I can imagine. A parent is often a child's first hero, and their image can influence their whole life. <sighs> she never told me any of those stories herself. And she hasn't piloted a star skiff since the third Denizens of Abundance War. She doesn't even bring up her military achievements. I used to watch her fly when I was young. <laughs> then one time, I stole a star skiff and I tried all kinds of difficult maneuvers. Turns out I was as talented as she was. Not only did I survive the flight, my landing was perfect. I remember feeling so happy when they took me to see my mom. There I was boasting about the flight, expecting her to laugh, pat my head, say, that's my girl, or something. But boy, I've never seen her so scary. <laughs> I admit, I deserve to be punished. You can't let a kid get away with stealing a star skiff. But my mom was angry about more than that. She was angry because I viewed her as a role model. Because I had the same talent as her. I don't understand it. Parents never want their children to be in danger. I think I can understand, Madame Yukong. But 
flying is the only thing I want to do. I've already touched the sky. <sighs> it's mom's secretary, Miss Sequay. She just sent me a message. Mom lost one of her trinkets in Stargazer Navalia when she came to save me. Miss Sequay suggested I find the trinket and return it to mom. Said it might help me get back in her good books. In Stargazer Navalia? Hmm. Let's go with you and have a look. Is it really okay to bother you two again? <sighs> uh, sorry. <laughs> Please don't mention the mung bean soda again. <sighs> the fight with the abominations was pretty chaotic. I think Mom's trinket would have dropped around here. Do you know what it looks like, Miss Chingni? <sighs> Let me think. It should be a little square thing. She's usually got something like that on her. This is your area of expertise. Wow. Isn't solving puzzles my expertise? Well, isn't finding a needle in a haystack a type of puzzle solving? Are you serious right now? Your powers of perception are impressive. No matter how well a treasure chest is hidden, you're always able to spot it. I think you're the right person for the job. Oh, come on now. <sighs> come on, are you kidding? It's a trinket, remember? You think my mom would carry this with her? Hmm. It's a beautiful vase, though. What an intricate pattern. Isn't that the Divine Beast fortune pattern? Well, this is too big for a trinket. A Devastator Glaive? Hmm. Is this from the battle? There were a lot of Cloud Knights. Mm, no. This is only a replica. Probably some kind of film prop. Oh. Hello. A birdcage. Huh. That reminds me. Have you guys heard of the birds that live in the Everhunt Plains? They have beautiful feathers, but you can't domesticate them. They don't live long if you lock them in a cage. Makes sense. How could a bird that's known the sky live in a cage? <laughs> Mom always carries this trinket around with her, but I never realized there was something inside. Is this... the hunt crust? Modern art? <laughs> this is what pilots hang in their Starskiff cockpits for good luck. It must be very close to Helmmaster Yukong's heart. Let's head back, Miss Chingni. I think you should return this trinket in person. This is an opportunity for the two of you to talk. Uh, not yet. I want to go back later. There's something I hope you two can help me with first. If you want us to help you persuade your mother, I'm afraid that could be difficult. It's not easy to solve a family dispute as an outsider. <sighs> no, you misunderstand. I just want to know what she's thinking. What turned an ace pilot, someone who loved to fly, into someone like her? My mom clearly misses her flying days, otherwise she wouldn't keep this on her person. But she doesn't fly anymore and refuses to let me become a fighter pilot. Why? Hmm. Maybe we can ask some people who might know the truth. Like Jing Yuan? Well, the general's been busy at the seat of Divine Foresight recently. We might not get to see him right away. Still. It's worth a try. He was the one who promoted Helmmaster Yukong. 
He probably knows more about her past than anyone. General Jin Yuan? Are you sure it's okay to go straight to him? Oh, <laughs> right. You're the general's guests. Even so, this is asking a lot of you. <laughs> no problem. If we can get to the bottom of why Helm Master Yukong no longer flies, we might be able to find out why she doesn't want you to be a fighter pilot. We can't help you too directly, but an indirect conversation like this might give us a clue on how to convince your mother. Do we really know Jing Yuan that well, Mr. Ying? Don't worry. General Jing Yuan is understanding. I'm sure a small visit won't trouble him, especially if it's about a young girl's future. <laughs> In that case, thank you so much, Benefactors. I'll head back to Starskiff Haven. I'm not ready to return to the Skyfaring Commission yet. Mr. Yang, and you? What brings you to the Seat of Divine Foresight this time? It's nothing urgent. We were hoping to... understand Helm Master Yukong a little better. Yukong? Hmm. I heard an office worker from the Skyfaring Commission flew a Starskiff to assist in the present crisis, but ran into trouble herself. She was only saved thanks to a couple of travelers. On behalf of the Law Fu, you have my thanks once again. The seat of divine foresight heard that Yu Kong seldom seen but often feared temper was on display. I believe the two of you were caught between mother and daughter. We heard that Helmmaster Yu Kong was an outstanding pilot, but that she refuses to let her daughter embark on the same career. Yu Kong herself is best placed to answer such questions. But naturally, you are here because you fear that Helmmaster Yu Kong would decline to answer. If you wish to dispel Miss Ching Ni's curiosity, perhaps we can take a small step back from the topic at hand. What do you wish to know about Yu Kong the pilot? Did Ching Ni tell you any of this? <laughs> it all serves to remind me. A long time ago, a young Foxian girl, charged by the Knights with a high-speed flight violation, was brought before me as punishment. Now, she's the Madam Helmmaster, my equal. If I were to turn back the sands of time, and try to convince my past self that the little girl in front of me would one day become a wise and experienced helm master. I, I would have probably never have believed it. The Yukong of the past was nothing like she is now, spending her days surrounded by documents at her desk. She was a flaming wind. The only one who could ever calm her was her comrade. Comrade? Yes. Large fighter stars gifts need to be operated in pairs. One pilot takes the helm, the other controls the turrets. The legend of the ace fighter pilot is incomplete without the ace gunner. Yu Kong's partner was Sai. Both at the controls and behind the turret. Tsai was like a cold blade. Efficient. Decisive. Unfeeling when she had to be. It's hard to imagine such contrasting personalities working in perfect harmony. As I mentioned, the campaign inflicted heavy losses on the Sienjo Air Force. 
I see. Oh, this is a divine object from the Rainbow Arbiter. Where did you find this? I picked it up off the road. <laughs> Which road? I should head there myself. A divine object like this possesses a market value of at least 20,000 strails. <laughs> She's kidding. This object has been stored inside Helmmaster Yukong's personal trinket all along. Miss Ching-Ni lent it to us. She thought it might be a way to find out more about Yukong's past and why she no longer flies. This object is no ordinary trinket. It has borne witness to blood and tears. I'm sure you're both familiar with the Sienjo's long galactic hunt, but have you heard of the denizens of Abundance Wars? As the Sienjo has continued to cleanse the universe of immortal abominations, so too has the Abundance Axis succeeded in breaching our defensive lines. They pushed the Sienjo to the brink of disaster. Thirty years ago, the Sienjo Yao Ching and Feng Hu were besieged by our enemies. Even in the long history of warfare between the Sienjo Alliance and the denizens of Abundance, that air battle was one of the most tragic. We were greatly outnumbered by the abominations of Abundance. Almost a million fighter pilots fought in the bitter battle. Those who survived numbered no more than a hundred thousand. Had the Rainbow Arbiter not descended and destroyed the enemy's assault with their sky-shattering Lux Arrow, who's to say whether the La Fu would still be here today? Such divine objects were forged from the embers that the Arbiter's divine arrow left behind. For the survivors, these relics contain the blood of their comrades, the ashes of their enemies, and the dust of their memories. Yu Kong is a survivor of that war. Her best friend, Tsai Yi, perished on the battlefield. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, General. I do not wish to speculate on the reason behind Helmmaster Yukong's reluctance to fly, nor do I want to open up old wounds. However, it is difficult to discard one's past. Yukong and Sai trusted each other with their lives. The Helmmaster will have strong memories of that time. Perhaps it is not my place to say. But I believe Ching Ni has the right to know about the past. As the past is starting to affect her future. Thank you, General. Thank you, General. We apologize for taking up your time with such triviality. Mr. Yang, you jest. How can harmony between parent and child constitute a triviality? If you ask me, the mountains of documents and the seat of divine foresight are the only triviality around here. <laughs> we'll take our leave. Let's go. We should head to Starskiff Haven and find Ching Ni. Shimorufa, did you learn anything from General Jingyuan? How do I pronounce that name? Shik, shi, shikui? Shikui? I don't know. Oh, you're here! My mom isn't in a great mood. She went for a walk. She skipped work? <laughs> My mom isn't the irresponsible type. She only skips work if she's managed to delegate everything. <laughs> You two are very similar. Well, we do both like to take a walk after a fight. 
The only difference is that I come to this side of Star Skiff Haven and she heads to the other. That way, we don't bump into each other. That's actually kind of cute. <laughs> really? I think it's silly. Anyway, did you find anything out from General Jing Yuen? Did Helmmaster Yukong never bring this up with you? <sighs> I was always curious about her past, but she either dodged my questions or pretended not to hear them. In the end, I realized she probably experienced something that left a scar. A scar that never fully healed. I never asked her again. Even a flying ace can get into trouble. Yes. Yukong doesn't want you to feel the pressure of her name. Besides, reputation and talent count for something, but you need luck on the battlefield. So she doesn't want me to fly because she remembers the pain of losing her friend. And she thinks that my talent makes it more likely that she'll lose me in the same way? I can't guarantee that's what she's thinking, Miss Chingni. You should talk with her yourself. Hmm. You're right, Mr. Yang. But I still have something else to check first. This past that General Jing Yuan mentioned is probably archived in the Palace of Astrum. Um, I, I remember watching her handle a document with great care before she filed it away. It looked like a diary. Do you still remember where it was filed, Miss Chingni? Uh, vaguely. But there are so many files stored in the Skyfaring Commission. Could I ask you benefactors to look for it with me? Hmm, uh, a couple of outworlders going through Skyfaring Commission files isn't a good look. I'm afraid we can only accompany you, Miss Chingni. You'll need to do the searching yourself. Uh, of course. You're right. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going, going to call you Chiku. You know? The fruit. Yo, uh, can I help you? Uh, I, I know what it looks like, but I'm using Celestial Jade to improve the algorithm. I'm working, I swear. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll get going. Hey, don't be lazy. Be efficient and lazy at the same time. What the? I love work. I love overtime. 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 Um, let's leave her alone. What do you mean her? It's here. We can use this one. Okay. Hmm, let me see. Helmmasters, personal archive. Oh, I got it. Let's go take a look. Hmm, it should be here. Let's see. Yes! This is Mom's diary! Miss Chingni, I don't think the two of us should be reading your mother's diary. It should be fine. This is from decades ago. For you travelers, that's more than half a lifespan. Uh, no, I still think I shouldn't read it. You stay here with Miss Chingni. I'll be waiting over there. <sighs> fine. Is it really that big of a deal? I'm sure they're just her notes on life as a pilot. Yeah, but still, it, it's a diary, you know? I shouldn't look either. Come on, please look at it with me. I need someone to give me some advice. Let's read it together. Maybe her diary holds the key to all of this. Oh no, am I going to read it? No, nah, man. It's a diary. Why should I read it? What is the meaning of this? The Helmmaster's daughter bringing Outworlders in to sneak around? Yeah, it's not my fault. What do you have in your hands? Let me see. <gasps> Madam Yukong's diary? The nerve. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Mother becomes diary the nerve. 
Whoa. How dare you read Madame Yukong's personal diary? And with her daughter, too. By the Arbiter, you two are in for a... Mr. Yang Min, please, calm down. Let us explain. I see. Ching Ni, I know Madame Yukong's position on you becoming a pilot is tough for you to accept, but she has her own concerns. I understand, Mr. Yang Ming. But now, compared to becoming a fighter pilot, I'm more interested in knowing what my mom went through. I want to know what happened, how she went from ace pilot to helm master. <sighs> I've been here for a long time, Ching Ni. If there's something you wish to know, just ask. But don't go rummaging around, that's a bad habit. Okay, um... Yeah, sure, why not? This divine object, if I remember correctly, it's the one Madame Yukong always carries with her? I heard the war that forged this object was only won thanks to the Rainbow Arbiter's blessing. If Madame Yukong still carries objects from that pilot, then perhaps she still longs for the sky. If mom still longs for the sky, then why does she no longer fly? Perhaps Tsai's passing was too much for her. You shouldn't be asking me about this. Ask your mother. Miss Tsai, I remember her. She was an ace gunner. Many people wanted to be her flight partner. Her husband, Mr. Guang Yuan, was a pilot. They manned the same skiff and were the envy of many. But when it came to pilots, your mother was the best match for her. They flew together all the time. Even Mr. Guang Yuan couldn't match their numbers. Well, after he passed away in battle, Tsai Yi rarely teamed up with anyone except your mother. It was tragic when Sai died soon after. That's the life of a pilot. No one knows which flight will be their last. Sai's death was a big blow to Madame Yukong. After the battle, she refused to turn in Sai's possessions as per regulations. She kept them locked away, occasionally taking them out to admire. I didn't think you'd know this many details, Mr. Yan Ming. Nonsense. As a Xianzhou native, I've lived long enough to remember more than the Foxian pilots could ever hope to. In the end, all the ace pilots perished. The only thing I can do is to remember them and ensure they are not forgotten too soon. Where are Miss Tsai's possessions stored? Thanks for telling us all this, Mr. Yang Ming. You are welcome. I know this is important to you. I suppose you're going to go through Madame Yukong's office desk next. I can understand your position, Ching Ni. I'll take my leave and pretend I didn't see anything. After all, it's an unwritten rule that subordinates should be absent when their superior's privacy is exposed. Please don't tell your mother that you saw me today. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Mr. Yan Ming. Hurry. Madame Yukong will be back soon. Uh, my mom keeps lots of stuff in her desk. Let's have a look. This desk has space to put stuff? That's the selling point of this desk. Super simplistic design with super spacious hidden compartments. Lots of office staff use this desk. Really? Uh-huh. Super spacious hidden compartments, eh? Uh, there are hidden compartments on the left, right, and under the desktop. Which one should we check first? Under the desktop. Got it. Hmm. This looks similar to Mom's diary. But it looks like it belonged to Miss Tsai. Oh, come on now. You want me to read 
another one okay fine why not wait what oh no um hmm oh no and she's read it with me oh no promise me don't let that child touch the sky so that's why so I was adopted in this Miss Sai was my real mother I suppose I've always had a feeling but now I know the truth I feel like I'm dreaming don't let that child touch the sky is this why mom refuses to let me become a fighter pilot when I was little I asked my mom where my dad was <laughs> she said I was grown from the star skiff assembly line at Stargazer Navalia. I thought she was just a bad liar. I even thought she meant I'd inherited her talent with star skiffs. I feel a lot closer to mom after reading this diary. Even if we're not connected by blood. I understand her a lot more now. <sighs> hmm. Can you come with me one more time? I want to have a proper chat with mom. Really now? Are you really sure? It's fine. I don't need you to do anything. I just want you and Mr. Yang to stand nearby. I'll feel more confident that way. Wow. You're all done? Did it go smoothly? Nope. I see. Let's find Helmmaster Yukong. We'll accompany you. We're here to help, but she and I really shouldn't interject when you're conversing with your mother. Hmm. It's okay. I understand. Just having you stand next to me is already a great help, benefactors. When mom feels down, she usually goes to take in a view of the Jade Gate. She should still be there. Let's go find her. Found her. Mom? Ching Ni? Why are Mr. Yang and they here too? Miss Ching Ni kindly agreed to show us around Star Skiff Haven. She mentioned she was trying to mend things between you, but was feeling shy about it. We volunteered to come with her. Thank you. I must apologize for the trouble my daughter has brought you. <sighs> Mom! All right, it's getting late. Let's talk once we're home. Actually, I want to talk to you about something right now. I want to become a fighter pilot, no matter what. Really, no. We've talked about this many times. No means no. Uh, but... Seems like Miss Ching Ni is a little hesitant. Uh, try giving her a little push. I thought Mr. Yang said we shouldn't interject. What should I say? Oh, come on now. Is that... Sai's diary? How did you... I understand now. I'm sorry, Ching Ni. I cannot support your dream because... I made a promise to someone else. I don't expect to gain your forgiveness. I, I just hope you can understand my reason. 
Mom, what are you talking about? I'm your daughter. <laughs> Our bond is bigger than forgiveness and reason. I'll listen to anything you have to say. Just like you. I once longed for the sky. I know what it feels like to fly through infinite space, to be surrounded by the vast expanse of nothingness with unimaginable splendors looming in the distance, to float like a single leaf in the fathomless stellar sea. Some called it loneliness, but we called it freedom. Sai was like that too. We were friends since childhood. We flew star skiffs everywhere, causing trouble until the knights caught us and dragged us before General Jingyuan. We soon became the most elite fighter pilots of the Skyfaring Commission. It wasn't an easy life. You could even say it was a cruel one. You never knew if the friend next to you would make it back alive. Of course, the same could be said of yourself. But those are my best memories. We would strike out into the sky, repelling demons and upholding justice. The blood we shed bore witness to it all. The life of a Foxian is short and fleeting. Surely we should dedicate ourselves to such glorious aims. Ah, oh, system space all clear today. Great weather for flying. <laughs> We're engaging the main Borison fleet this time. Don't get too excited. Huh? Sounds like maternity leave knocked the wind out of your sails. Feeling rusty? Oh, shut it. I think you're just excited because you haven't flown with me for so long. Did you miss me? Of course I missed you. The galaxy felt smaller without you in my cockpit. Say, Sai, really didn't think you'd come back. Do you really like flying star skiffs that much? <laughs> you bet. Sure, it's exhausting, dangerous, low paid. <laughs> Plus, you only get back to the Lafu a few times a year. But given the choice, I'd always pick this. I guess I already touched the sky. The mind is mysterious. I've lived for more than 200 years, forgotten nearly every conversation I've ever had. But I still remember us shooting the breeze that day. It's crystal clear. It was the last time I spoke to Tsai. <laughs> Tsai? Uh, hold on, Tsai. Tsai, open your eyes. Tsai. Thank you. You go. I've... I've had a good life. But please... Don't let Jingli walk the same path. Don't let her... become... a fighter pilot. She's your daughter. You'll be able to tell her yourself, do you hear? <laughs> the rescue's almost here. Stay with me. Jing Ni is waiting for you. She lost Guang Yan. She can't afford to lose you, too. Wake up! Sai! Sai! When I climbed out of the burning carcass of the star skiff, I looked up into a clear sky, pure and seemingly unadorned by the atmosphere that arced far above us. It was the most beautiful sky I had ever seen. It 
all I could feel was unbearable pain. I sunk to the ground and gazed up helplessly. In my dream, that was the day I died. Mom, this is the first time I've heard you talk about this. But I'm not a little girl anymore. The road of a fighter pilot is a cruel one. I know that now. But I won't hide from it. I'm not afraid to walk the same road as her. If my sacrifice can bring happiness to the citizens of the Sienjo, then I'm ready for it. You are so very similar to Tsai. The more outstanding you became over the years, the more fearful I turned. I've known for a long time you were ready, but I was not. You know, the cruelty has never claimed victory. Me, Sai, your father, Guangyan. We were prepared for the worst when we enlisted. But do you know how we won that war? The war that took away Sai and the lives of hundreds of thousands of fighters. The Rainbow Arbiter's Define Arrow. Yes. The mighty blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter annihilated all abominations in a single strike. But we had to pay with the blood of hundreds of thousands of soldiers just to halt their advance. If crushing our enemies was as easy as breathing for the Rainbow Arbiter, then what purpose did our sacrifices serve? Under the might of an eon, the sacrifices of ordinary creatures are but a joke. We are nothing. We mean nothing. Mom. But I never should have allowed my fears to compel me to make decisions for another person. <laughs> Even if that person is my daughter. I brazenly interfered with your choices. I am sorry. That is my failure as a mother. Mom, you don't need to apologize. Really, you don't need to. I'll take you to fill in the paperwork tomorrow. You'll start as ground crew, just like Tsai and I did. I believe that one day, you'll make an outstanding fighter pilot. Huh? Really? <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was afraid of you following in my footsteps, and more afraid of you taking after Tsai. But if this is your choice, then I'm willing to support you, even if you live to regret it. Mom, I have one last request. Tell me. I want to fly with you at least once. I'm afraid I can't. I won't be flying anymore. But... why? Because... I already touched the sky. for that one. Hello, Chiku, the fruit. Since assuming the role of Helm Master, it's rare that I have the chance to gaze upon the stars like this. It should be a view I tire of seeing, but it always leaves me in awe. The heavens really are boundless. 
What do you think of this place? Thank you. I like it. It's a shame. The stars no longer belong to me. Perhaps one day I shall feel their embrace once again. But it will undoubtedly be the day of my last flight. Hmm. Come and have a look whenever you can. I will. Thank you for your invitation. I can't help but say that after arriving on the Express, I'm a little envious of your way of life. You are able to enjoy the vastness of the universe and with reliable companions by your side. I hope you all cherish one another. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching, this is Chimorofa and we shall meet again Trailblazers. Until next time, after I deal with Pom Pom, yeah.